Portuguese capital, Lisbon, is a stunning and diverse city in the heart of Europe. It is full of life and color and is known for its friendly locals and many exciting attractions that can be fit into a day trip or a more extended vacation. You can go on an adventure through the winding alleys of the historic district, along the riverfront promenade, or through the lush parks and gardens. So, here's our list of the top 10 attractions in Lisbon. Before that, have you subscribed to our channel? If you don't, make sure to hit the subscribe button for more content like this. Now, let's get started. Starting off the list at number 10 is Tram 28. Even though trolley cars haven't been widely used in Lisbon for many years, Tramline 28 still offers a chance to ride an ancient streetcar. Passengers on the ancient train ride through Lisbon's oldest neighborhoods and past some of the city's most visited landmarks. But it is also utilized by residents as part of their regular commute, so no wonder why it's easy to gain your bearings and make new friends on the city's ancient tram system. Next at number 9 is Castle of the Moors. Seeing as how Sintra is so near to Lisbon and boasts so many stunning buildings, it is usually filled with visitors. The crowds are overwhelming, but this is a must-see while visiting mainland Portugal. This magnificent fortress was built on a hill during the 8th and 9th centuries. The Moorish castle is not only intriguing to tour but also provides splendid sights of another attraction and the surrounding area. If you want to know about that other attraction, just keep watching. Even though it's the most ruin-like castle in Sintra, it was nevertheless one of the favorites. The views from the walls are breathtaking and transport you to another era, making Sintra an excellent choice for a day trip from Lisbon. Next in line at number 8 is Monument to the Discoveries. Many of Portugal's most significant expeditions set sail from the banks of the Tagus River, where the massive white stone of Monument to the Discoveries looks like a ship with its sails open. Built in 1960 to mark the 500th anniversary of Henry the Navigator's death, this iconic structure is a must-see for every visitor to the area. A stunning frieze of statues honoring the most significant figures, including Vasco da Gama, Ferdinand Magellan, and Pedro Álvarez Cabral, is situated along both sides of the monument, paying fitting tribute to all those who contributed to the growth of the golden age of discovery. He, Henry, is at the forefront, caravel in hand. After paying your respects, take the elevator to the observation deck for a bird's eye view of the riverside and the surrounding area. In the esplanade below, you'll find a gigantic pavement compass, a gigantic mosaic map of the world that marks the places and dates of each new land's discovery. It's one of the most unique places to take pictures in Lisbon. Coming in at number 7 is Museu Calust Gulbenkian. The Museu Calist Gulbenkian is not just one of the most renowned museums in Europe but also a glittering jewel in Lisbon's cultural crown. Calist Sarkis Gulbenkian, an Armenian oil millionaire, born in 1869, left Portugal his extensive private art collection soon before his death in 1955, and the facility, located in a lush, verdant park in the city's north, bears his name. This dedicated arts facility was constructed as part of a foundation established by the terms of the endowment. Gulbenkian's incredible collection spans 4,000 years, from ancient Egyptian periods to the late 20th century, and includes works of art of inestimable value from all over the world. Taking in all the exhibits in the exhibition halls can take up to half a day, but the payoff is a fascinating tour of one of the continent's finest collections of art spanning centuries. Even though it's not a vast collection, the pieces are all of the museum-level quality. There are works by Monet, Renoir, and Rembrandt, which are just a few of the artists whose work could be on display in the park and in the museum's regular and temporary exhibitions. Next at number 6 is Old Town in Alfama. The Alfama neighborhood is Lisbon's oldest and most charming district, with its winding alleys, delicious cafes, and fadu clubs. The area is filled with architectural masterpieces, some of which date back to the city's Moorish past. Largo do Chararis de Dentro is the most excellent spot to hear Fadu, the traditional Portuguese folk music. The square is lined with pubs and clubs playing the song. With its elevated position, the plaza is merely one of several lookout points in this mountainous area. The ancient Moorish entry to Lisbon is Largo das Portas do Sol, where tourists can take a breathtaking panorama of the Alfama and the Tagus River. Let's continue with number 5, Carmo Convent. One of Lisbon's most airy and breathtaking sights is the abandoned Carmo Convent. It was the city's finest medieval structure before the earthquake of 1755 leveled it and the rest of the town. 
Even though the roof fell on the worshippers within on All Saints Day and was never repaired, the Gothic arches of the building remain. Windows and other Manuline elements were added in the 16th and 18th centuries, but most of the structure goes back to the 1300s. Many works of art from the convent miraculously survived the earthquake and were eventually dispersed to the city's many churches. Fortunately, the disaster spared the artistic and cultural significance and can still be viewed in the area around the Gothic arches and in the sacristy. Next at number 4 is Lisbon Oceanarium. The Oceanarium, one of Lisbon's most fantastic modern attractions, was constructed as part of the city's preparations to host the World Exposition in 1998. The Oceanarium is the biggest indoor aquarium in Europe, and it is located in the northeastern neighborhood of Parque das Nossas. There are four distinct ecosystems, each representing a different body of water. Each ecosystem features not only a wide variety of marine animals, such as sharks and stingrays, but also land animals, like penguins and otters. The sight of tropical birds flitting above a tank full of tropical fish is not to be missed. Coming in at number three on the list is the Saw Georgie Castle. Sao Jorge Castle, also known as St. George's Castle, is perched on a hill in the Alfama neighborhood and is one of Lisbon's oldest treasures. Lisbon's most visited landmark may conjure images of the city's time when it was ruled by the Moors. Still, it was actually a fortified fortification during the time of the Romans and Visigoths. Until the early 16th century, the Portuguese kings lived in the castle they had just liberated from the Moors in 1147. An archaeological museum now occupies the former royal quarters. It's simple to see why visitors to Lisbon flock to the castle ramparts, as the battlements and parapets offer spectacular vistas. Next at number two on the list is Geronimus Monastery. St. George's Castle, the most well-known of Lisbon landmarks, sits on a hilltop above the Alfama neighborhood, providing a breathtaking view of the Portuguese capital below. When visiting Lisbon, this is a must-see attraction. The castle is fun for the whole family, but climbing the fortified walls and turrets is a particular highlight for the little ones. There is also a fascinating museum and an intriguing archaeological site to explore. The observation deck's unobstructed views of the city, the Tagus River, and the Atlantic Ocean are enough to keep most tourists content. But before we reveal number one on the list, here are our honorable mentions for this list. Elevador de Santa Justa, an antique elevator with city views. At first glance, its welded wrought iron structure and battleship gray paint evoke the Eiffel Tower in Paris because the elevator was designed by Raoul Messnier du Ponset, an apprentice of Gustave. It was designed to connect the Bikesa district to the Largo du Carmo neighborhood, a popular spot filled with upscale stores, by the residences, and small restaurants. Today, rather than commuters, curious tourists take the 32-meter journey to the top, traveling in wood-paneled cabins with authentic polished brass instruments. The cabins squeak their way to a platform beneath the upper terrace. The views from the top are spectacular, including a bustling urban canvas of pedestrianized streets, gorgeous squares, and the ever-present castle and river Tagus. Praça de Comercio The riverfront Praça do Comercio outpumps them with its majestic 18th-century arcades, lemon meringue facade, and mosaic cobbles. Everyone who arrived by boat would disembark here and it still feels like the gateway of Lisbon, bustling with activity and rattling trams. As a city icon, it allows access to several must-see sites, including Patio de Gale, Cais das Colunas, and the unique Lisbon Story Center. Pink Street Among these out-of-the-ordinary activities is a trip to Pink Street in Lisbon. This is a literally pink area in the heart of Lisbon. This street of Lisbon is now home to the city's most exciting nightlife, closely like the past, but with a more modernist perspective and a smaller dose of liberty. So, if you want to end your day with a smile, you should definitely add Pink Street to your Lisbon itinerary. And now, tied for the number one spot is Bolem Tower and just outside Lisbon, Pena Palace. Bolem Tower, a symbol of Portugal's spectacular age of discovery in the 16th century, squats in the shallows near the mouth of the River Tagus and is arguably the most recognizable of Lisbon's historical landmarks. The tower, a stronghold constructed between 1515 and 1521 and initially located in the middle of the river, is often regarded as the pinnacle of Manuline ornamentation. Fantasy nautical elements, such as twisted rope and armillary spheres, are carved into the stone and embellish the building's elaborate facade. This landmark is so significant and well-known that it has been designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site. 
The King's Chamber is the most fascinating part of the multi-level interior in the second story since it leads out to a Renaissance loggia. Above the graceful arches, the royal coat of arms of Manuel I is shown. The view from the tower's rooftop terrace is well worth the arduous climb to the top, which overlooks the river and the avenue below. However, a visit to the beautifully lovely town of Sintra is perhaps one of the most gratifying day trip experiences just outside of Lisbon. Set against this stunning backdrop lies the National Palace of Pena, the famed crown jewel of the Sintra Hills. The colored tones of the palace, the peak of romanticism in Portugal, and the undying legacy of Ferdinand II open the doors to the imagination of all who cross its threshold. With the infinite hues of green painting the surrounding park establishing an idyllic scenario hidden behind the mists that characterize the Sintra Hills, this has been the site of dreams for all generations who have walked through here and marveled at its majesty. A sight as if they had stepped out of a fairy tale. And that brings us to the end of this video. We hope we made your itinerary easier. For more videos like this, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification button for updates. Until next time.